Hey you guys, welcome to our Friday afternoon live broadcast. Michael and I are going to be discussing your fitness ego and could your fitness ego be getting in the way of your fitness progress? Michael and I both have suffered from our fitness ego getting in our way uh, during different times of our, of our life. So we kind of wanted to share some of our aha moments and some things that you can do to kind of get you out of the fitness ego trap. So welcome if you are joining us live um, or you're joining us on the rebroadcast either here on the Facebook page or we upload this to my YouTube channel as well. Welcome. Make sure you leave us a comment in the comment section when you log on so we know you are here with us. If you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave those as well and then we circle back around for like the next day or two and answer any comments that come in from our rebroadcast members as well. Um, okay, so fitness ego. I actually just suffered from this probably the last, what, three weeks or so? Mm -hmm. Well, it was actually the last couple of months when I felt really panicky about the fact that I had previously run a half marathon every four years, not every four years, I did it twice, so within an eight-year span. Um, I ran my first one when I was 44. I ran my second one when I was 48, and I'm coming up on the end of my 52nd year. And um, I was panicking, feeling like I had to run a half marathon within this four-year window, or uh, or I don't know, I don't know what, but I, or I was like not a legit runner, or you know maybe I'm just like a weekend warrior. Or I don't know. I was putting like all this pressure on myself to have to commit to this four-year increment for some crazy reason, and I was really not feeling it. Um, my body wasn't feeling it. I don't like running outside in Texas, so that part was difficult for me. And you know, even the thought of running in December in Texas is not exactly exciting to me. And I don't remember what the weather was like on that weekend. I don't know if it was hot or cold, but um, I, it was just, it was, it was more of an emotional burden and beat down. And um, when I, when I really started thinking about why it was I was doing this, I had, I had no reason, like no reason other than my ego. I have to run it before for years or I'm not a legit half marathoner or I'm not a legitimate runner, which is not even true. And, you know, and then I thought about, well, like no one's even sponsoring me or anything. Like, you know, I don't have to answer to anybody. I just don't run my half marathon. Um, and I ended up running 13 miles at home, which was much better for me and my body. But the minute I let go of my ego trip of having to prove something to validate the fact that I'm a runner and a running coach and I've been running my whole life and all those things that I think I have to live up to, as soon as I let those go, boom, my fitness has just completely skyrocketed because I don't have to rest and recover after a beat down long run on a Sunday. I don't have to fuel my body for those torturous two to two and a half hour runs. I wasn't mentally and emotionally exhausted from how I was feeling afterward and all the pressure of, because not only do I have to run a half marathon, but I was putting this pressure on myself that I had to run it faster than I did eight years ago, which is crazy too. And so when I put all that stuff away and I just went back to working out, my fitness has been crazy. Like I have been able to run, um, I'm running completely on a treadmill. I don't run out outside, outside at all. And I've been able to, in some of my workouts, run like a seven minute pace, which is crazy for me. I'm like a 10, 11 minute miler, but I'm doing it in a training environment and I'm doing it with rest and I'm doing it with stretching and I'm doing it with other types of workouts. So I've been able to really peak at my fitness despite the fact that I've completely pulled back on some goals that I had. And it really has helped me a lot with just being more fit in general, which is ironically the reason we work out in the first place, right? Is to mm -hmm. be more fit, not to be more broken down. So if you're feeling like you're broken down, I would highly recommend checking in with your ego. Um, Michael, how have you experienced a little bit of fitness ego trumping your fitness performance? This one always points it out to me. He's like, hey, you're letting your ego get in the way. And something we decided like over the last few months was, hey, we really need to get into, you know, tracking your heart rate. We've been doing all that stuff. I've uh, uh, been doing some zone training. But what I find myself doing is like on the Peloton bike, I slip into race mode because <laughs> I'll, I'll see somebody trying to catch me. You know, it's, the race is usually between, uh, you know, uh, you. five four to five riders. Uh, 
because there's a, a, a gap between that and the really super competitive riders. Uh, it's like for the 50 year olds on the Peloton, they are crushing it. Uh, I have no competition with 20 year olds, 30 year olds. They don't, they can't ride. <laughs> but, and I'm sorry if you're a 20 or 30 year old, but, uh, the 50 year olds for some reason they crush it on the bike. I mean, a lot of times they're winning the whole race. So I feel like mentally there's no reason why I can't win or be number one out of everybody. You know, that's just how I feel mentally because I feel like uh, physically I've got myself to a point that I can compete. And I feel like mentally I'm at a, a place mentally that I can mentally handle a workout, you know, uh, so putting those things to, together, you know, we all know you got to get the mental and the physical together. And when it comes together, you feel like you can do anything. However, uh, <laughs> let's, let's rewind to, what was it yesterday or day before yesterday? Uh, two days ago, I think. Was I was, uh, I was going for the top 20. Okay. And I was, uh, I ended up being number 23 and out of the 50 year olds, I think out of, a hundred something 50 year olds I was like number seven whatever you know there goes my ego kicking in but anyway I was going for it. it's probably one of my greatest rights ever and Diane wanted me to join her for some boot camp right after my ride she'd already started so I jumped off the bike ran right into the boot camp and we started doing some <laughs> she was already into squats so I started doing squats with her and I had to stop I just felt lightheaded Okay, so her response is, hey, you need to do more, like, serious training and not try to be, don't let your ego get in the way. And I'm, and I, I'm like, well, no, it was More just, cardio, too. It was, yeah, it was me bending at the legs right after jumping off the bike was what made me feel lightheaded. So we kind of went back and forth on this issue, but I know that she's, that she's right. I know that that uh i need to stick to that uh you know being more dedicated to getting into the zone training and i'm going to get better and i can i will be able to compete at the really really high levels if i can just train myself keep training mentally and keep training physically to where uh i'm staying in in some zone training and doing some longer rides and being able to sustain something for a longer period of time. And why and why is it that you need to do more sustained training as opposed to always going full out? Well, that's the way to get better. Right. That's I mean, how you improve your Yeah, life. that's the that's the goal is to get better. But if you're always burning yourself out, then you're just gonna you're just gonna burn out. You're never gonna really improve. Right. So so if if I were to look over at Michael's heart rate monitor, it's flashing like red, like ninety six or something, for the majority of his ride. Which though that's fine, like that, but that's racing, right? So what we have to remember whether it's like a CrossFit workout, a cardio workout, a strength training workout, you're trying to deadlift some you know phenomenal about amount of weight or something to prove something. You know, there's that risk reward benefit, right? And if you're building up to doing something like that, then that's fantastic. That's the whole point of training, right? To be able to kind of peek yourself out and, and show some improvement. But if you're just, if you're constantly in that zone of working out at 95 to 100% of your max, and you're not allowing your body the rest and recovery that it needs, because there's a reason there's HIIT workouts, there's a reason there's Tabata workouts, there's the one-to-one -one work to rest ratio, there's the two-to-one work to ratio, there's the one-to-two work ratio, and those are designed specifically to help your body produce what it needs to produce in the work, and then recover when you're in the rest. And so if you're constantly working and you're not taking the time to recover, that's when you, you know, you see these people on the, at the finish line of marathons. I had it on my very first half marathon, dude falls out and dies of a heart attack on the, you know, the finish line. Cause you're not conditioning your heart. You're just working it and working it and working it and working it. And what we want to be able to do is have those bursts of energy, but then also watch our heart rate recover. Right. And if we're not allowing it that time to get strong and then rest and then get strong and then get rest, it's just working and working and working and working. And before you know, it, it's going to say, uh, -uh I'm done. And you're out, you're laid out. And so that's what signs of like a lightheadedness or when you bend down, you feel like you're going to pass out. Like you should be able to complete a cardio workout 
and recover. Like you should be able to start seeing that heart rate just go down. That's a toned and conditioned and elite heart. If you're working out and it takes forever for that heart to come down, your heart's beating so hard to get blood pumping around your body that you can't recover. So you want to work and recover and work and recover. And then put on your schedule two weeks down the road, oh, I'm going to work to the point of building up my aerobic capacity and uh, working through uh, and training my body to handle the lactic threshold and, and being able to pump through that and recover through that. And I'm going to make sure I've got my breathing down and my form is right on because when you're beating your body into the ground at 95% of your max, your form's probably not on because you're chasing the pace and you're not executing the right form. Then you got knee problems and back problems and shoulder problems and you know all of these aches and pains and joint problems because you're so worried about what you're performing to and you're not considering what you're doing in the moment. And you always have to be concerned about safety when you're in the moment because one wrong squat or run one wrong bend and you know you're laid up on the couch with a bad back or a blown knee or something like that so we always want to make sure that one we have proper form when we're working out and, and understanding our mind to muscle connection and making sure that our body's in the right positions we want to make sure we're breathing properly you want to monitor your heart rate and then you want to train to race so that you can build up a nice variance of workouts, nice variance of intensities with recovery, making sure you're doing your pre-workout um, warm-ups, making sure your post-workout stretching, and then pick a day that you're gonna PR or whatever it is you do. Uh, maybe it's you're gonna kill it in your tennis league or you're gonna you know, swim some crazy laps at the pool or beat all the 20-year-olds on the Peloton bike or you know, place in the, treadmill or whatever it is you want or your own personal mental PR that you have for yourself and that's fantastic that's exactly why we should be working out and that is the ego boost that we're looking for but you don't want to have an ego boost or a PR every single time you're out there working out because you won't see the fitness progress that you're hoping for and then again that that's when we start thinking about you know why am I not feeling good why am I why is my body not changing why am I not losing any body fat y'all you have to be in an aerobic state with your heart rate for a prolonged period of time to really get into that fat burning state and if you're constantly in that anaerobic state you know for long periods of time your body's just not going to respond the way it needs to so make sure you understand you've done your calculations on your heart rates as well um, and then make sure you understand how your body feels in those intense moments and you know do you need to like you probably should have stayed on the bike for an extra couple minutes and just got your heart rate back down um, and, and watch that when you are working out when you are working out at your high end um, target heart rate zone so that 85 90 watch the heart rate monitor go down when you start to recover. How quickly is your body recovering? Because the sooner you can get that heartbeat back down, the more fit your heart is and the more capable your heart is, is of doing its job properly. And that's why we want to, you know, participate in this exercise. And not only because we want to be strong, not only because we, we want to win, but we want to make sure we got a healthy heart. We want to make sure we have healthy joints. Uh, for us ladies, we want to make sure that we're doing all the things to offset osteoporosis and all the things we have going on with our menopausal symptoms and all those kind of things. And, and you should be able to find some joy in it without having to absolutely kill it every single time you, you go out and do your exercises. And I think it's, it's important, too, that, uh, I mean, like we've had our physicals and our hearts check out. And we're fine and all that. But uh, there's still, like there's still concern. I, I know when I look down and like Diane said, that thing's blinking red and I'm at like, you know, 110% uh, of my max heart rate. Is that real? I mean, is that a real max heart rate? Because like the charts you follow, I mean, we had to up our chart to a uh, uh, more physically fit chart because we definitely weren't on that chart, the standard chart. Uh, so what we would like to do uh, for 2019 is uh, do a, a VO2 max uh, test and know exactly where we're supposed to be because uh, there's nothing like being at you know 105 percent 100 percent 10 percent okay I feel like I have I have some juice left and mm -hmm. this guy's trying to catch me and like it's not going to happen today it's just mm -hmm. not going to happen you know then you start to you know worry and you wonder well, no, no. like is it, it Am I going? Am I going too? Am I doing too much? You know, is this? Or are you not doing enough? That's the, the right, concern I, yeah. too. You know, like so. If you're going off some standard 
as a 52 year old woman, I think walking is maxing out my heart rate, but I know my heart is because I train my heart to be conditioned and healthy. Um, and so I know my heart is more of an athletic uh, beat than it is of a 52 year old men of postmenopausal woman. Um, and so I, we are going to go get VO2 max tested just so we can get a more accurate account of what our metabolic burn rate is. And we want to get some testing done to, to see what our actual heart rate is and where we stand with our um, exercise capabilities. So know that too, um, and adjust accordingly. But I guarantee you when homeboys over here, trying to kill it on the Peloton bike. He's huffing and he's puffing and he's working hard. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we are in check with ourselves. And what is the point of doing all this exercise if you're just going to drive your body into the ground and risk um, getting hurt? Um, yeah. And so sometimes it's just okay to check your you at the door. And sometimes you have to make that decision like we do this too with our, when we go out to eat. And we'll say, oh, okay, we're going to go out to eat tonight. What are we planning on doing? You know, do we, are we going to have a Pellerino? Are we going to have just regular water? Are we going to have a glass of wine? Like we try to plan all that before we go out to eat. So when you go out to eat and you sit down at the table, you're not tempted by all the stuff that that's around you. And so the same thing holds true with your workouts. You should have them planned out in your calendar with a, a race date or a PR date or whatever it is you want to do and work up to it. So you can say, you know, Monday I'm doing a HIT workout, Tuesday I'm going to do a 30-minute Tabata workout, Wednesday I'm going to stretch, Thursday I'm going to run, Friday, you know, Friday, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you can calendar it out so you're doing specific and appropriate training to get, to get you where you want to go as well, as opposed to winging it every day. If you wing it every day, you're probably going to end up racing every day. And sometimes you have to take extra steps to do that because I know for me – that ride I did the other day where I had this personal record and, you know, all these amazing things with this ride, it, it was supposed to be a low impact day for me, but I was feeling it. The music was good. And I had well, some people good, trying to a, catch me and it, and it just wasn't going to happen. I, I would, you know, I was going to die before they were going to catch me really? Thank and you. beat me. Well, I, I mean, it's just the way it was. For that um, day. So that's another thing to keep in mind too, is that if you have that preset in your mind, why, why am I going to work out today? What's my overall goal and objective? And you go into it with that, then the music isn't going to catch you and the vibe isn't going to catch you. You're going to go, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to keep it down because the same thing happened to me. I uh, ran a, I did two workouts on, um, was it, I guess it was Wednesday, huh? Let's take it. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, I did just a 20 minute run, easy one, and then I did 20 minutes of strength training. And then my favorite instructor was teaching a, a running class uh, Wednesday night. So I jumped back on the treadmill with her. Um, and um, yeah, I came in number 10. Uh, I See? beat a couple 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was going into that run that way because I had a light run in the morning and I hadn't had a hard run on the treadmill because I've just been kind of trying to get, get acquainted with it because it's new. Then the next morning, I ran a 20-minute run at a 12-minute pace. So the night before, I was running like sprints at seven, eight-minute paces, but the next morning was a recovery run. I could have easily gotten on the treadmill. The music was great. She's awesome. I could have put that thing at like eight or nine-minute you know, pace, but I went into it intentionally to just run my legs right and i did a 12 minute mile specifically i didn't go any faster didn't go any slower and i ran for the 20 minutes and so if you go into it knowing what your plan is and what your purpose is for what you're doing then it's easier to kind of stay in control when the energy gets really high yeah. too yeah that's true awesome hey thanks diane for jumping on with us today girlfriend it's rainy and foggy here as well and we thought we were going to get snow today Sadly, we did not. But uh, that was the uh, the forecast for today, right? With snow. We or thankfully, it. we did not. But thankfully, I, I don't know. Who knows? Well, I ain't going anywhere, so it could snow all at once. <laughs> uh, okay, so we won't be here tomorrow. Now, next Friday, we will be in route to Maui for our Christmas vacation. But make sure you're all tuned in to us on Instagram because we will be sharing all of our fun stuff in Hawaii on Instagram just because it's easier to do there. Um, now I'm going to be sharing with you guys how you uh, recover from jet lag when you're crossing across the pond. Um, we're going to be, what, a six-hour time difference? Four-hour uh, time, four time difference. Four-hour time difference. Um, and, you know, flying is just crazy hours and all that kind of stuff, so it'll be wacky. So I'll kind of show you what we do or what I'm going to do to kind of keep myself from being all groggy and out of whack when we get there because four hours is a big difference. 
Um, when you think about fasting and feasting, that's a huge difference and how I'm going to get myself right on track really quickly. So I'll definitely share that with you guys Thanks, for Diane. sure. So we won't be here next Friday. We'll be here hopefully the next Friday. I don't even know what date it is after that. Is it, will it be, oh, we'll be well into the new year by then, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. All the stuff that we celebrate. Um, and then we'll be back for New Year's. So we'll be checking in with you guys. And like I said, follow us on Instagram. That's where we'll be sharing all of our stuff that we'll be doing in Maui with the family as well. Love you guys. Don't get your ego um, out of whack. Make sure that all your fitness uh, um, efforts and all your fitness goals are lined up correctly so you don't end up putting yourself in a position where you're going to get hurt or overwork yourself or... Um, or be bummed out about the fact that you're not seeing the progress and feeling the progress that you were hoping for. Sometimes you just got to slow down so you can speed up, right? Have a great weekend and a great right. holiday.